What's up, it's Marco, Sage of Soccer. As you can see, back home for spring break. You know, don't have the background as I want, but got my Philadelphia Union jersey, so yeah, that's a positive. But yeah, gonna be getting into U.S. Men's National Team prospects and the MLS this weekend. Week two, uh, you know, not many debuts to go over, so it's definitely not gonna be talked about as many players, but we still got a couple of good performances to talk about. I'm gonna go in chronological order based on how the games happen. So starting things off, we got the New York Red Bulls and John Tolkien. He put together another very solid performance as New York Red Bull dominated Toronto. He was good going forward, which is good because you want to see his progression going forward. He's already solid defensively, which he was again today, but man, good job going forward. Good, decent job going up against Marshall Ruddy of Toronto, though he's not looked great in that right back position, but still, that's a tough task. He looks like a very good prospect, and I honestly think he could play himself into the conversation for the U.S. men's national team at left back by the Nations League. Now, he does need to become a little bit more athletic and needs to work on his consistency in his attack, but Tolkien's really somebody who needs to be on the U.S. men's national team radar, and he's somebody who's been really progressing. Now, this guy I want to talk about, a center mid from the New York Red Bull, and it's actually not Caden Clark. It's Frankie Amaya, who, who's been having a great start to the year. I believe he leads the league in assists, and he looks very good on the ball and has been delivering in some very good set pieces. He looks like a much improved player and maybe keeping Caden Clark out of the lineup. I mean... He's someone to watch because I think he's somebody who we recognize his talent, but if he can keep up this consistency and if he can keep performing, stay in the lineup for New York, I feel like we're going to be talking about him the same way we talk about in Georgie Malhalovic in a few months' time. Another guy, definitely for the Nations League, somebody to keep your eye out on, or at the very least by the December camp for next year. Next guy I want to talk about, we're going to the Philadelphia Union, woo, and we have Nathan Harriel. Probably not the guy you would have expected me to talk about for the Philadelphia Union. I mean, with Paxton Aronson, Brandon Craig, Quinn Sullivan, Jack McGlynn, Leon Flock. But Nathan Harrell, Harrell had a very good defensive performance for the Union. He did have like he did kind of let in a fluke goal, but I mean, if you saw that, that was too random for it to be on him. His athleticism and defensive talent really showed. He's a right back who's really been kind of impressing. He had he did pretty well when he stepped in during that a uh, huge outbreak that the Union had last year, which forced him out of the MLS Cup, but uh, he's been looking pretty good, and he could continue to start after Oliver and Bazo. He hasn't been impressive to start the year, and Harold did well. He did well when he was called on. Now, he didn't do too much offensively this game, but if you were watching and you saw the field that Montreal put out, uh, that wasn't on him. You couldn't really string passes together in the Olympic Stadium. So uh, I'm looking forward to see what he can do going forward, and... Uh, yeah, hopefully he can progress a bit more offensively, he can show his stuff, and I really would like to see him stay into the team. Next guy to talk about is Cade Coel out of San Jose. Uh, he was playing right wing this time, and he looked dangerous after coming on at halftime, and he helped f uh, fuel a home, uh, San Jose comeback. He's looked more improved on the technical level. Uh, he's That's been the big issue for him, because we know his physical abilities. He's honestly like I'd compare him to like a Jordan Morris floor to his game. Like Jordan Morris is the least that he will be. He's He's probably going to be even better, especially if he can get out of the MLS. And and he looks set for a great season. He's continuing to develop technically. His goal scoring is still showing through. And like with his physical abilities, like for the U20 team, he could be game-breaking. And it's not impossible to get into the senior team. Now, I want him to really nail down a position because left wing back last week, right wing this week. I s still would like to see him as a striker. But, uh, you know, whatever position it is, I just want to get some consistent playing time and Consistent starts, consistent position, and just consistency for his game. Next person to talk about, Gabriel Sonina, and another clean sheet. You know, like, I almost didn't even want to mention it, because just really good, like, solid performance. He didn't have too much to do, but he's like, what, is he still 17? Is he 18 now? And he's keeping clean sheets in the MLS, and it's like a footnote. Like, this guy is such a huge prospect. I do want to mention that his distribution has been looking good, and... Man, with Turner and Stefan both being out, I mean, people are having the conversation of should Slonita be in net for the USA team. I don't think so, but it is a conversation. I still have Horvath over him. I'd still have Sean Johnson over him. But uh, the fact that he's this young and in that conversation is insane. And we have to... Cabriel Slonita is going to be amazing going forward. Next guy I want to talk about is Andres Jassen, who came on for Kayvon Gray for New York City FC. He's been playing right back for them. And honestly, Andres might have more potential than Gray. I mean, 
Andres is a natural winger, so his defense isn't the same level as Tavon Gray, but his attacking ability exceeds Gray, and you'd expect the defensive ability to come as time progresses. I mean, it might not, and I mean, we're talking about prospects, so basically everything, every one of these players, like, they could not pan out, but when you're looking at potential and what this guy could be, Andres Jossen, he might have a decent ceiling and definitely going to be something to watch for New York City FC. And unfortunately, Tavon Gray picked up an injury, so he might get a chance to start next week. And definitely a guy to keep your eye on. Also, on your guards to New York City FC, it hurts for me to not call Keaton Parks and Gideon's Little Island prospects. I mean, I don't really have, like, a huge bar, but I don't think you could call them prospects at this point. But Little Island has looked better, and, uh, man, 2016 me would be very excited about that. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is we're going to D.C. United and Griffin Yao. He's continuing to start and have good moments. He doesn't really have too much position. I think he's uh, more of a striker naturally. He's been playing a bit off the striker for this for a bit, and he has a couple of good moments. You can see some technical ability with him, but uh, it hasn't really translated to goals. It hasn't really translated to any real dangerous attacking moments, and more than anything, he really needs to fill out. He is uh, about my size, like 5'6", and probably weighs even less than me. <laughs> and That's not a good bar to clear, but uh, yeah, he really needs to fill out, and the technical abilities there, he's hasn't really scored that much in MLS, but he has a good ability to score. Like, if you look him up, you will see a ton of worldies from him, but, you know, he definitely needs to progress, but it's definitely starting at this age. That's definitely a good thing. He needs to be on people's radar, but I want to see him take that next step. Next, uh, Moses Nyman uh, didn't really have the best performance this week. I just wanted to mention him because he picked up a red card and a straight red card. So normally that's a big suspension, but I didn't really think it was that bad. I think they'll be able to appeal it, and it hopefully won't be the three games because that would be pretty bad. But, yeah, don't expect me to talk about him for a little bit. But, uh, yeah, definitely still a really good prospect, but disappointing start to the year so far. But DC United's not exactly – hasn't been putting out the greatest performances. Now going to Atlanta, and the context for Atlanta right now is they're going through a bit of an injury crisis. So they are playing some younger players who – basically out of position, maybe they shouldn't have the time yet. So Tyler Wolf, he's getting a lot of playing time, but he isn't having the biggest impact. He's still a young player with a lot of time to develop, and I'm honestly looking really forward to him because he hasn't had too many impressive moments so far, but the faith that Atlanta have in him is definitely a good thing. And I see it as once like the starters come back, training sessions will be a lot more intense, so that'll make him get better naturally and if he's coming off the bench and he's running at tired teams, I feel like he can have a much better chance to impact games. But as of right now, not really making the biggest impact, but I'm definitely excited about Tyler Wolf. He could be a good player. Then we got George Campbell, who was forced to play in the midfield for Atlanta, as, as I mentioned before, they have an injury crisis. Now, I do like his ability on the ball, but he's not going to be playing like a six in the future. Like He's not somebody like a Brandon Craig who you could... He was kind of up in the air. Will he be a center back? Will he be a six? No, he's a center back. I do like his ability out of the ball, but didn't have the best game at the six. But given the context that he did not train the position at all and Atlanta injury crisis again, I saw that he was rated by one of their fan sites, 30 South Soccer, as their joint best player, which isn't a lot. They won. They lost 3-0. Th- uh, but Miles Robinson did pick up a red card, so George Campbell should be able to play center back next week. And while he's not a polished player... Like, as he cleans up his mistakes, he's got a good athletic profile. I like his on-ball ability, and I really think he's got, a, like, star potential. He's somebody I'm definitely keeping an eye on. Next guy is, we're going to Charlotte, and we're talking about Jaden Lindsay. He's the right back for them, and he could be primed for a breakout year. He's got some good athleticism and has some talent going forward. Now he has to clean up his end product and add some consistency, but after leaving Sporting Kansas City, he's looked pretty good, and, you know, he's got all the tools to go to be a good player. Again, he has to clean up mistakes. He has to be more consistent, but Jaden Lindsay, he could be a very good player. And next guy from Charlotte is Ben Bender, the number one pick of the MLS draft and really talented midfielder. He's been looking good for them. Uh, Charlotte, their attack isn't exactly good. I mean, they're an expansion team. It is what it is. You can't expect them to do well, but Ben Bender's looked lively, I'd say. He's making an impact for them, and for a team that really struggles in the attack, he could be that creative outlet needed for them, and I could see him starting in the near future for them. 
Uh, now we're going to Seattle, and we got the debut of Reed Baker Whiting. He had a couple of good moments for Seattle, which is all you can really ask for somebody his age. But again, like some of the other players, didn't really impact the game. But you can see a good amount of talent there. It should be seen uh, said that from a good amount of like uh, youth net, youth team followers, like they seem to say that uh, Reed Baker Whiting's like rated higher than Obed Vargas. So he's definitely someone with a huge amount of potential who I want to see play a bit more. But uh. Yeah, didn't get to do too much today, but he's 16. Like, you can't expect much. Though, so, Obed Vargas, he came off, came in off the bench, and I gotta say, he doesn't look out of place at Seattle. And I feel like that's a huge compliment, given that he's 16. Like, he's making chances happen, he's getting into challenges, and looks like a really solid player. Like, I'm getting really excited about Obed Vargas and his potential, because he shouldn't be this good at his age, and... What he's doing could be great for this team going forward. Again, Seattle's become a team that I really want to watch, which I did not expect going into this year. But yeah, Obed Vargas, like, I feel like I'm underselling him, but keep an eye on him. Try to watch him as much as you can because he's going to be a great player. Next, we're going to Austin, and we have Kip Keller, who MLS draft picked this year, and he continues to impress. He's putting in some solid shifts, and he's looking good for Austin. Now, uh, it should be said that, like, this is a big compliment. Like, I've seen some Charlotte fans wondering if they should have even drafted Ben Bender because Keller's been doing really well. And Bender's been doing well as well. So, man, Kip Keller, Ben Bender, BBKK. I don't know. That's, I feel like that's entertaining. But uh, anyway, Keller's on a really good path. And I feel like if he continues to keep up these performances and does well for Austin, like, I feel like he can be in line for a winter U.S. men's national team camp. Like, I mean, we don't really, like, care that much about Camp Cupcake, but I feel like Kip Keller could definitely get there, and he's somebody I want to see continue to progress because he's adapted to the MLS level, like, really quickly, and if you're able to do that, then he could be a great player. Now, last guy I want to go really in-depth with is Noah Allen. He had a couple of good moments. You could see his talent on the ball, but he made a good amount of mistakes and got subbed off at halftime for Inter-Miami. It's a pretty big learning curve going from a USL League 1 to the MLS. And while he's starting to get better, and he's a really young player. He's going to get better, and he's going to get adjusted to this level. But at the moment, like I'd expect him to come off the bench the second Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain returns for Inter-Miami, or, or when Kieran Gibbs returns for Inter-Miami. So, uh, yeah, that's all everybody really want to talk about. Uh, I should mention that uh, Zach Ryan made his debut. Uh, Ian Murphy made his debut. I, I feel like Murphy could be a good player. And uh, Quinn Sullivan made his debut for the Philadelphia Union, though he didn't have too much time to do anything. It should be said that they had the confidence to sub him on for Alejandro Bedoya when they were down to 10 men. In fact, uh, that uh, Union going down to 10 men is the reason why uh, Paxton Aronson and Jack McGlynn probably didn't play as well. But yeah, that's all everybody from that I want to talk about. A good amount of prospects played. Even some guys I didn't mention, like Caden Clark and Brad Gutierrez, got a good amount of time. But yeah, a couple of really nice performances. I think so far this year, like, Gabriel Salin is obviously the standout, keeping two clean sheets already. And uh, Frankie Amaya, he's looked very good as well. John Tolkien, he's impressing. New York Red Bull is definitely a team to watch, and definitely Chicago as well, Philadelphia. Like, a lot of really talented young players, really good teams, a couple good prospects, and I feel like a good amount of these guys could push for U.S. Men's National Team cap. Probably not for the World Cup, but maybe for the Nations League. And I definitely like to see a couple of guys in them. So yeah, that's all we're going to talk about right now. See ya.